时尚，品味生活。时尚无时无刻不在演绎变化，影响着我们的生活。今天我们就一起去走访一下加拿大时尚界不老的传奇，著名的设计师泰克麦克伦。从一九六年起，泰勒就开始做一年两季的时装发布，到现在已有四十七年，历时两个世纪。他曾经被著举世闻名的甲壳虫乐队和加拿大总督米歇尔·金设计过时装，也曾经获得过无数的奖项。他的作品经典与浪漫相聚，时尚和青春共存。他传奇的一生让我充满了好奇。好，接下来就请大家一起随我去参观一下泰特的工作室。I'm really honored today to、uh, have a chance to talk with Pat McDonald,、uh, who is the Canadian fashion legend, and she has been doing designing for over four decades. And、uh, I, I'm so appreciate that she put the right、uh, color, which is Chinese red, for us,、uh, and、um, she did a new collection. Uh, with a lot of red,、um, I really enjoy your、uh, fall winter 2010 collection this season,、uh, which is inspired world and peace. Yeah. And、um, and you,、uh, which is, you also put the military uniform、uh, touch in this. And、uh, would you please、uh, talk about that briefly? Okay, my collection was to show that about that a uniform is something is a beautiful creation. It should not be used for intimidation, and it should not be used for power. And to let everybody know that you go out every day, expressing the joy of creation,、um, like you today have your uniform.、Mm -hmm. That is expressing who you are. Yeah. My uniform is all my jangly jewelry, and people misinterpret uniform, and then you know you get idiot men with all those medals, and that is why in my press kit. I gave everybody a medal, saying that you get that medal for being yourself. And many uniforms are very beautiful: the brave, the gold. I love uniforms,、um, but it should be that you can wear that as an expression of creativity. And and from that, we developed into that we wanted to do. I wanted to do a collection called Peace,、um, where we will contribute a little bit to. Uh, the association vow, which is women who work for peace, and they're they're working and getting water, and they're getting things in the rainforest. And these women, it's a very powerful group. They work with the UN, and you know, I believe every day you should believe whatever talent you have. When you were born, that seed was already planted in you for that talent. And Mother Teresa says that she says we're all just a pencil in God's hands. You go out with whatever talent you have, use it for your good, but use it for the world good. Yeah, like、uh, you,、um, I was so curious because you just put the idea like a thread, and you, and then you weave that into a whole collection. Yeah.、Um, how could you、um, develop your collection and put your inspiration into that? Because You did. I I have been go through your couple collections. Like last year, you did a dessert theme, and then a chocolate cupcake. Yeah,、uh, going was, on. yeah. And you did、um, a global warming theme. Yeah,、collection. oh yeah. Oh, you remember my collections, yeah. And then you did、uh, women for encouragement. Yeah, I've forgotten that one. Yeah, yeah, and all those kind of things made me just some sort of in your. Mind and then could you just share some experience how you、yeah. put them all together and make it really good collection? In Canada, I don't think designers can be allowed to be political activists. If you're Vivian Westwood, you can. But I, as you get as old as me, you realize you've got more responsibility than just being a designer and being frivolous. There is a, a bigger meaning in design. When I did the global warming. Um, which some of the press didn't even understand. All my furs. I'm very careful about world wildlife, and we supported world wildlife, and it, they were all approved furs.、Um, but I think that at that time there was a, people were just starting to be aware of global warming. So each collection now, I'm having to expand my brain to say this is not just about some fun clothes. It has to say more than that, and the people who wear it, 
I find the people who like my clothes and the women who wear my clothes are very interesting women. They're women like we have um, uh, the Honorable Vera Brill, who is one of the top neurologists in the world. We have Rosie Bella, the High Chief Justice of Canada. We have Michelle Jean. Michelle mm -hmm. Jean wore my military coat when she met Obama. Yeah, that's yeah. really better for her. So they're women who are very intelligent and they're trying to do bigger things for the world. And you know, when you go out, you, you, you have the power to give a message. And by your look, and by your creativity, you have to take that pencil. You're a pencil also in God's hands. So you have to write the message. And I think we have more responsibility to the world. So that's how this all started. And what I'm going to do for this spring is just beginning in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. And uh, you told me just uh, today, uh, actually, Pat is working on the cashmere um, design for yeah. the company. Uh, yeah. Do you mind to share a little bit with, uh, with us about that? Okay, well, the, um, every year, the cashmere, they do the, uh, the toilet roll cashmere, but they make, they have all the designers do a design in cashmere. And it, almost my theme, I'm very much inspired by nature. And that's why in my office, my therapy is that I have a garden out there, oh. it's a bit wild. Um, but I was looking at the roses and I was thinking, no roses come without thorns. Mm -hmm. And the, the texture of the rose is very like the texture of that very soft toilet paper. Mm -hmm. So now we get a rose and we turn oh, it upside yeah. down. Uh -huh. So my cashmere dress, it's two things. It's inspired, you know the wonderful hat? Mm -hmm. that Patrick de Machier did. Oh, yeah. Well, I was asked to do that by one of your fellow countrymen, David Ho. Oh. Yeah, he, he photographed that. For oh, the yeah. Color. I, th I saw the uh, picture he did for the main That's thing. right. That was my hat. I oh, did. And after beautiful. he bought the hat, because he loved the hat so much. Oh, I didn't so, even know that. He didn't tell me about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I did the hat, which is the rose this way, and then I did the dress which is the upside down rose, mm -hmm. which has got the softness of the rose, but it's upside down, because I think that's how life is. And then for my jewelry, I want to do thorns. Um, this is all a bit deep and probably people will just see it as a pretty pink dress. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But it is inspired by the roses in my garden. Oh, that's, that's how your design comes from your life. Yeah, yeah. Um, over 40, years, um, Pat have been doing designing for women, like, and the uh, stars or the uh, politicians, um, daily people, but no matter who they are, uh, she could pick up something really special and unique. And what do you think you uh, make them follow you for so many years? I don't know, you're driven. I think if you have a passion for doing something, I've probably been designing since I was three because my mother made all our clothes and we came from an Irish family that we could not afford a lot but my mother made everything. She made our clothes, she made the priest vestments, she just sewed. But because she had never been taught professionally, she felt she couldn't charge people. Mm. So she would do a whole wedding and people would give her a box of chocolates, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason you take the chocolate theme? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I, I, Remember, uh, at the beginning, um, Pat uh, has been working modeling and television. And what leads you towards a fashion de designer as your career, um, finally? You mean how did it develop? Yeah. Right? Well, when I first came to Canada, I came here because my husband was in Canada. And so I came here with my children. And when I came here, I had a little vinyl miniskirt. Mm -hmm. And I did the clothes for Diana Rigg for the Avengers, some of those. So I was all in. <laughs> And there were no pantyhose here, mm -hmm. and people literally were shouting things at me for this. And I came with Twiggy. You remember? Twiggy yeah, I know was... Twiggy. It's very um, open, the top model in the world. Yeah, the and at that time here, all the models had puffy hair yeah. and pointed boobs, and nobody understood Twiggy. I took her to the star for an interview with me, and the lady said, "I asked you to bring a model." <laughs> and Twiggy was standing there sort of like this. No. Oh my god. It was like being in the dark ages. And then I got him 
I started to work for dialects, which was a big conglomerate. I learned an awful lot there, but it was just so awful because all the skirts were longer and mm -hmm. I didn't understand miniskirt, yeah. yeah. But you know, I learned, it was hard, but I learned so much about production, so much about manufacturing in Canada. And at that time, there was no design scene. There were some designers in Montreal and myself. And so we formed this group of designers. And I remember when I did the show, and the, the first show I did in Canada was in the 70s, and I did very big shoulders. Mm -hmm. And the government, the Canadian government, wouldn't allow me to show because they said it wasn't the Canadian image. And then the Paris shows were after Canada, and Montana showed these big shoulders. Uh -huh. And then everybody was coming to me for my big shoulder coats. But I always remember the Canadian government took my coats out of the show. Because, yeah, that was originally. Really? And then all the government ladies were buying my big shoulder coat afterwards. But that's, that's kind of weird. I, I think uh, Canadian allowed to you express yeah. really whatever you want. Oh, I was I devastated. <laughs> and those coats were so great. It was during that whole power. Yeah, I mean, that's true. now. This thing, you know, with the women of the vow who say that women have to have a voice and power, it's not like that 70s statement mm -hmm. where women went around in great big shoulders with briefcases mm -hmm. to try and get power in a man's world. Mm -hmm. Now I think we just have confidence in ourselves. We, you know, I believe you should get your, whatever you want to achieve by your own assets and your own femininity. You don't have to go around looking like a man in a suit. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, that's, that's but in the 70s and 80s, if you look, every woman wanted to be a bank manager, even a little secretary. She had a big shoulder suit, a current car, and a group guest. That's really wonderful. I think um, I should. Re I think we have to pay the homage for what Pat had been doing. Um, back to the days, Pat bring the fashion concept into Canada, and she set up the pro um, the the foundation part of. Fashion Design Council of Canada, which is now you keep ongoing evolving, and I really want to um, let you share some experience, you know, so far how fashion changed your life, you know, through the years. What makes it so important to you? I think I'm just driven every year. It's to do the next collection, and I, even myself, I'm involving all the time. I mean, at one stage, I just designed clothes I liked. Now I realize I've got more responsibility than just to do that. And now I'm more aware that you're employing people. I, and I have my interns who you met before. Um, and I have one lady, a sample maker in here. She's been with me 47 years. She's 85. She comes in every morning at seven. And I realize you, you're not, and I hope this is a message to younger designers, you're not just responsible for yourself. You're responsible, if you're given any talent, you have to also help the people who survive on you. And now I'm working with um, the Zhang family, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, <laughs> um, but with Linda Zhang, and with Jason Zhang here. And that came in my path um, because of, of Linda's working with Gejiano in, in China. But then what happened, Jason is now working with me on doing all the clothes for the Canadian Shopping Channel. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely. I and mean, I mean, it's different branches of the family who are totally separate and totally different. And I'm enjoying this very much, so I'm working with Jason. Mm -hmm. And then I love the family because the father started, and you, I can't pronounce his name, I'm not going to try. Yeah. Um, but here you have a man who started a business in China and then brought his family to Canada. And I really admire, um, I admire a sort of, a, it's a, a, not a matriarchal society, in Irish it's a matriarchal society in my country. Mm -hmm. But he has put his children in different roles, and then you have the daughter and the mother who have maternity shops all over China. You have the son, who is now going to work with me on doing all my Canadian and North American. Mm -hmm. And then you have Linda working with Gay Giano, who is yeah, hoping to get my clothes into China. Yeah, so, that's really beautiful. Yeah, it is. And you can see that family developing in different ways. My children, 
Don't worry. They will say they learn nothing from me. They're all in Vancouver. <laughs> my daughter designs wardrobe for movies. For film. Oh, that's nice. But she always goes, she learned nothing of me. me. But my son hated that I was on TV. He, he wanted a mother, a real mother, who was home cooking and doing homework. You know, yeah. So, but, so my children are there, but your children do learn from you. But my children don't want to be in this business. Uh, uh, but I think what they learn, maybe they couldn't even notice that until later they could experience the life and they could tell. It's hard to say. But yeah. uh, like what you feel like, while well, you were a child, you, know, you, was, you were three years old, you learned from your mom, see what yeah. she was doing. And then actually that really make a difference how you, you Yeah, you do. Yeah. It's okay. like, yeah, I was going to say, when I was about three, my sister was very shy, and we used to go on holiday every year. And my mum made us 14 days. You had 14 dresses with matching on the cuffs, and she used to have suitcases under the bed of fabric. Oh, and I would pick for my sister and for myself, and I would go, she's having a dress like this, and I'm having a dress. Mm -hmm. So you were actually designing, mm -hmm. um, and you were learning how to use fabric. And I think my children, they have learned, they maybe learned other things like independence or the only one is my son who, um, my son who always says he wanted a real mother and for, for his wedding my daughters kept calling and going, Mum, it's Dominic's day, could you look like his mother? And I said, I am his mother. They said, yeah, but don't look like that, don't look like you usually do. No, oh, she wants to, um, yeah, well. His dream mother was a lady called Mrs. Maha, and she cooked, and she looked after her children, and she wore those fuzzy pink slippers and a pinafore, and that's what I was going to wear to his wedding, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's really very interesting, because uh, you bring something in her mind and back to her life. Yeah. So, like, well, how did your background bring oh, you into this? My, um... Well, I have my... Now I'm interviewing you. Yeah. <laughs> my, well, I'm, I'm uh, evolving actually as well. I, I was doing modeling in China before, and then I moved to uh, Canada three years ago. Um, Do you have family here? No, I came here alone. All by yourself? So yeah. you've done, you see, so you've been using your talent. So how did you get your talent? I'm now interviewing you so people will know who you are. Oh, that's true. I came to uh, Toronto and then I, um, because I like fashion, so I take the courses at Ryerson um, studying uh, program. Uh, after that, I figured out I think I want to be a designer, so I take the uh, program at George Brown College, uh, Fashion Design. Um, last year, I applied uh, several different schools in New York and uh, London and Italy. Um, I get into a Fashion Institute of Technology in New York and University for the Creative Arts uh, London. And I guess I will start my uh, study in September in London. If you... yeah. And God has blessed you also that you have these wonderfully distinctive fashion looks. So it also, because it's such a judgmental society that they see the first image, and you have such a distinctive special look that straight away it takes you out of the pack and it will it will give you the opportunity to do very well. Yeah, now I know. I feel like a little dwarf at the moment. I don't well, like this image. Yeah, because you can tell people were different and then right away you can see the past they can develop, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there's one more important thing. As yeah. a young designer, <laughs> I really want to know um, how do you overcome the, uh, the hard part uh, you never your, do. Every day, team. like today, I'm facing the hard part. Every day. It, there's always, if you really want to be into fashion or any other career like theatre, acting, it has to be in your soul. It has to be your passion. You're going to have to give up a lot of things like family life, as I said, is a disaster. You know, it can affect your children, feel abandoned. Um, if you're very passionate, I think the same with an actor, the same with anything. You have to put your soul into it, and you, for the sake of integrity, if I designed polyester suits, um, I could probably make a lot of money. I, oh, yeah, I designed what I believe, I, I, I maybe have condensed it a little bit now, 
to make money for the Cana in the Canadian market. But I do what I really believe in. And then sometimes you're too far ahead and nobody understands it. Like I did a Death in Venice collection inspired by the Fellini movie yeah, that's true. five years ago. And I, you probably saw that collection with all the, the nautical and the boy on the beach. And Karl Lagerfeld did it the season after with the same colours and used the same music. I, I mean, I know he didn't see me. So you take your inspiration, but if you're too early, people in, don't really buy it. Mm -hmm. But then I don't want to just make things... It's not just about money, and that's one of my own problems. I have the decision whether to go out and do commercial stuff and make money or do what I want to do. And if I've made that decision, I suffer. And if you make that decision to do what you really want to do, there has to be a balance somewhere. And I, I don't know if I've found that balance. So every day you're meeting those challenges. Um, and, you know, but it, it's something that if, if, if you're driven to do it, that's what you do. I think that was a rather garbled response. But <laughs> so, um... I'm so glad we get the chance to talk to so close with Pat McDonald. And that's, that's one sentence. Uh, what would you like to share with other Chinese audience? Sorry, I missed that one. Uh, what do you like to share all the Chinese people uh, today? Just one sentence. Um, I, I actually respect Chinese people very much. The people that I work with from China, because they're hardworking and they're dedicated. Um, and again, I have to say, and this is a little bit bad of me, but um, they're only just now, though, in China, learning to respect the power of women and the dignity of women, and that women have a voice. Uh, that's why I'm trying to give Linda that voice in India, but in, in China. But Chinese men originally did not... They, you know, the women are very bright and very smart. Mm -hmm. And I think now the Chinese government is beginning to realize mm -hmm that women have that voice. That's true. And, and women should have that voice. Because when I work with Chinese women, they're so hardworking and so talented and so bright and smart. And sometimes with deference, when you're meeting with Chinese businessmen, they're not really listening to you. And they're not really giving you your say one thing and they're saying another thing. I, I yeah. understand. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I think there's still a long way for us to go to the stage you are trying to achieve, but I think things are changing. And I really uh, hope Pat could come back to China soon. She has been there in, in Beijing years ago, but I do uh, believe, like, um, go visit back to China, yeah. go visit Beijing, and uh, we love to have you there and to share your life experience and your brilliant talent. I'm looking forward to that because the last time I went was when Prince, when they built the subway when Princess Alexandria came and all in Sampo Kong, mm -hmm. poor little people with their shanty huts, all of a sudden everybody moved them all and all their pots and pans just because Princess Alexandra was coming and I was mad because there was a poor lady who used to be where the subway was and they just moved her whole house and all her cooking and her pots and I thought that was terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really a hard way. Yeah. Um, there are so many issues we have to deal with. Um, it's the background, you know. It's yeah. Too many things evolving together, so yeah. you can now take one stride to make it clear. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like that in my country because you think in Ireland they've been fighting for so many years, and then we lost half the country, and they will let you know. It's only now that they're getting peace in Ireland. But because I come from a kind of a rebel Irish family, we resent that we lost half of our country. Um, and it, it's the same thing with so many things because of prejudice and, you know, fighting to get a better world. So now in Ireland you have peace, but it's taken a long time and not to sacrifice to achieve that. And I think in China, um, it's gradually being, they're gradually recognizing giving everybody dignity mm -hmm. and not just using them as work machines mm -hmm. but it will take time you know in those big factories I was that you know those people are almost it's more important to produce like thousands of garments a day That's true. than 
I always think I'd rather make one dress for a million dollars and you've got one box and one machine, but they have to feed the machines to feed the people who work on those machines. And they're almost like machines themselves. And that has to get better. Yeah. That every single one of those people should have a voice. We are, we are lucky to have you, to have that voice for all the women or all the peoples even, because yeah. your design has something there and they speak by themselves. Yeah, and you look at talent, you never know where talent is going to come from. Maybe somebody in one of those little villages in China, if you look at, you know the hat designer Philip Tracy? Oh yeah, that's okay. true. Okay, yeah. just wonderful hats. He comes from the poorest village in Ireland. How this man could ever think to design hats and end up in Paris and everywhere. If you saw where he came from, there, it's a row of houses and there's one toilet at the end of the street for the whole row. And so it fascinates me that somebody like him, that talent could come up into the world. When I was in Corsica, I looked at Napoleon's home and I thought, this little tiny fishing home, and this man ended up marching into Paris and being an emperor. Yeah, How does that happen? And that could happen in China. Maybe there's some poor little man somewhere. You know, but there's that, and that's that thing that like Jesus said, that seed in somebody, how that rises up and they get that chance. I, I don't understand it. I, but think, it's fascinating. I think you know that. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, uh, I think, I would, if you don't mind, could you just show uh, your house, your, um, show us around, and I really like uh, what you display here, and talk about those things. What's about the designs that I did. Yeah, like, okay.